Reading Parsha Truma is like reading a furniture assembly manual in the original Swedish. It contains very technical instructions on how to construct God's sanctuary, and unless you took woodshop in elementary school, it can get confusing. The Parsha begins with the Jewish people encamped in the middle of the desert. Moses goes up Mount Sinai and God instructs Moses on a number of things. First, the Jewish people are to give gifts of gold, silver, exotic linens, and jewels. With those exotic materials, they are to build a holy sanctuary. And Moses stood there on Mount Sinai, and God instructed him further, saying, Some assembly required. So check out the overall layout. Build an ark of gold with two cherubs on top. Add a menorah, mini altar, and offering table all in gold. Place these in a house called the Mishkan, a.k.a. Divine Dwelling Place, a.k.a. Tabernacle, out of wood and silver, and covered in expensive fabric. Zoom out to the sacrificial altar and utensils, all made in copper. Add a huge outer perimeter made of linen curtains between large wood posts. Now let's zoom in to the complicated part of this project, the Mishkan, a.k.a. Dwelling Place, a.k.a. Tabernacle. Besides the pyramids, this is the most solid building the Jewish people have made in a while. And this building was going to have to be portable. And not portable like iPod portable, more like ten guys on either side lifting each piece on rods through the desert portable. To make a wall, they line up large planks of acacia wood and connect them with larger-than-life versions of those little wood pegs you use when assembling a bedroom set from Ikea or Target. But oops, we have a problem, because even though you've aligned the planks, they'll still move around like a slinky in the event of a sandstorm, earthquake, or any other unforeseen act of God, which, as we've seen, the Israelites are getting used to. To solve this, they push long rods through the entire wall, preventing this slinky effect. Now we've got everything aligned, but the planks can still pull apart, so each plank has tenons on the top and bottom. Tenons are basically wooden fingers extending from the ends of each plank. To secure one plank to the next, they place huge solid silver rings over adjoining tenons, locking them together. This technique not only makes for a secure wall, but also for a beautiful silver foundation and crown. And God said to Moses, Form follows function. Now that this ready-to-assemble dwelling place of the Lord is put together, zoom out. Inside, everything is gold, then silver, and then copper as you reach the outside. The Torah is not being very subtle with the symbolism here. The most precious thing the Jewish people have is God's presence. How do you house and keep the things that are most precious to you? In two weeks, the Torah flashes back to the story of the golden calf when the Israelites built an idol out of gold and precious jewelry. The Jewish people took many precious things with them out of Egypt, and the first thing they did with them was to build a false idol to worship. Does this mean that gold, jewels, and beautiful, luxurious things are evil? Not quite. In this Parsha, the Jewish people take those exact same materials and build an ark, a menorah, a mishkan, they use the very same materials to house and protect the deepest, most precious things we have. Just as the Israelites took many valuable things on their journey, during our lifetime we also take with us many wonderful things, both physical and spiritual. It is up to us to decide how to treat what is most valuable. We have the choice to build either a golden calf or a mishkan.